The gear that you're wearing today includes a pair of pants, a pair of trousers which are khaki woolen, uh, a tunic of course and a shirt, a pair of putties to stop mud and dirt getting into your boots and your pair of boots and currently you're wearing a, a soft cap. Later on we'll be adding your set of equipment, giving you your bayonet and trenching tool, your rations and very importantly your rifle and probably a shovel as well. You had the idea for this a few yeah. years ago now, talk Absolutely. me through it. Yeah, 2011 the idea was to build a replica trench to really illustrate a book called 24 Hour Trench to look at the reality of 24 hours in a trench in 1917. So this is the fire bay, this is where three or four soldiers would be at any one time. And what you've got is you've got the parapet, which covers your head, the parados that covers your covers back. Covers your head. Yeah, well, just. <laughs> yeah, so you're too tall for this game. And then what you've got your foot on is called the fire step. If we have to shoot, step up on it, you'll see what happens. You can see, and then you can bring your rifle up and you can shoot at anybody coming to attack. Shoot the marauding hordes coming over Surrey. Well, possibly, yeah, but the point being is that you're now vulnerable as well. The big problem you've got is those boots of yours. If they leak, you get wet feet, you risk getting trench foot. So now we're away from the booming artillery outside and into the relative peace and sanctuary of the officer's dugout. Here, this is where you run your unit from. Probably four officers, two on duty, two off duty. See, telephones are here, soldier servant here giving you your meal, your cup of teas. But obviously what you're doing is running that routine during 24 hours. So from here, you'd run, first of all, stand to every single soldier waiting half an hour before dawn, half an hour after dawn in case of attack. They should be making sure that the men hang their rations up, don't leave them on the ground, otherwise the rats will get them. In fact, above your head now is a piece of string, and the reason it's there is so that should you have your rations, you hang them up on there, the rat really, unless it's brilliant, cannot climb along and get them. The more rats there are, the more evidence there is of bad soldiers. We're still bad officers. So we've crawled into this subterranean hole. During the bombardment, you'd leave the sentries outside. Six of you would be in here, possibly more if you had to cram them in. And you're waiting, you're hunkered up, you're waiting for those shells bursting on the outside to stop which move into the attacks coming through or you're waiting for that one that comes through the roof. You might be trying to play a game of cards, trying to take your mind off it, because otherwise if you start concentrating on the shells, you're gonna go mad. So you've got to talk, tell jokes, do anything. Once the shelling stops or the enemy start attacking, you've got to get out that door as quickly as possible. You don't want to be caught in here. One grenade through the door and we're all toast. I mean, the point is here, we can't recreate mortal dread and fear. We wouldn't want to. What we can do is recreate the living conditions so that, that you or I or anybody else can get an understanding of what the experience was like day after day after day on the Western Front. And if we can do that one, we're a little bit closer to understanding the real experience. That's the Great War as experienced, not the Great War we imagine.